بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم This video is about the sum of IID random variables that are uniform over the interval from 0 to 1 We will prove these results here Our starting point is to investigate the CDF of the fractional part of the sum from x1 to xn So we have the random variables xk, k from 1 to n We compute the sum because the random variables are from 0 to 1 Then this summation here is greater than or equal to 0 less than or equal to n we get a real number between 0 and n now we investigate the fractional part of the sum this is exactly the sum itself minus its floor the floor of a real number alpha is the greatest integer less than or equal to alpha the fractional part is between 0 and 1 what is the cdf of the fractional part of the sum then we need to investigate the distribution of the sum itself we focus here on the cdf the PDF can be obtained via differentiating the CDF with respect to X. This distribution is famous and it has a name, the Erwin Hall distribution. Then we investigate this integration here. And this integration can be written as the expectation of the floor of this summation. We will prove that this expectation is N minus 1 divided by 2. We will compute this expectation in two ways, given our results here. And using this, we will establish this identity involving the binomial coefficient n choose k. Let's investigate the fractional part. Note that if we have x1, just one of those random variables, then the floor of x1 is equal to 0 with probability 1, because x1 is between 0 and 1. The probability that x1 is exactly equal to 1, this is 0. The probability that the floor is 0 is equal to 1. This means that x1 is equal to its fractional part, almost surely. Consequently, the fractional part when we have just one random variable, is uniform on the interval from 0 to 1. Now, let's take two of those uniform random variables. Let's go for the CDF of the fractional part of x1 plus x2. By definition, this is the probability that the fractional part of x1 plus x2 is less than or equal to x. We take small x here on the open interval from 0 to 1. Let's apply the law of total probability. This probability is the probability that the fractional part is less than or equal to x and the sum of the two random variables x1 and x2 is less than 1 plus the probability that the fractional part of x1 plus x2 is less than or equal to x and x1 plus x2 is greater than or equal to 1. In the first case, if the sum is less than 1, then the fractional part of x1 plus x2 is simply x1 plus x2. The event that we have here is that x1 plus x2 is less than 1 and x1 plus x2 is less than or equal to small x, where x is between 0 and 1. This probability here is the probability of the event that x1 plus x2 is less than or equal to x. x1 and x2 are uniform, so their PDF is defined over this unit square. And on this line, the sum x1 plus x2 is equal to 1. This point is 1, 0, and this point is 0, 1. This is the axis x1. This is x2. The line on which x1 plus x2 is equal to small x is this one here. So it has slope 135 degrees. And this point is small x comma zero, and this point is zero comma small x. The event of interest is that the sum is less than or equal to small x. That's basically this region here. The joint PDF is equal to one, and the probability of interest is simply the area of this triangle. That's one half times x times x. That's one half times x squared. Let's go to the second probability. X one plus x two is greater than or equal to one. In this case, the fractional part is the sum minus one. The event of interest is that the sum is greater than or equal to 1. That's above this line here. And at the same time, the sum is less than or equal to x plus 1. So if there is a line, and this is x1 plus x2 is equal to 1 plus small x, we are interested in the area beneath that line and above the diagonal. We can obtain this area by subtracting the area of this triangle from 1 half. We have 1 half. What is this point here? If x2 is equal to 1, x1 is equal to x, this point is small x comma 1 and this point is 1 comma small x since this point is 1 comma 1 the area of this triangle is 1 half 1 minus x squared now we add the terms will cancel except small x the cdf of the fractional part of x1 plus x2 is small x between 0 and 1 this is exactly the cdf of a uniform random variable on the interval from 0 to 1 the fractional part of a real number doesn't change if we subtract an integer from the real number, the fractional part of alpha plus beta is the same as the fractional part of alpha plus beta minus any integer. Let's choose the integer to be the floor of alpha. In this case, alpha minus the floor of alpha, that's the fractional part of alpha. 
we have this result that the fractional part of alpha plus beta, any two real numbers, is the fractional part of the fractional part of alpha plus beta. If we assume that the fractional part of the sum from x1 to xn is uniform, and this has been established for the case in which small n is equal to 1 and small n is equal to 2, if we need this assumption, then what about the distribution of the fractional part of the sum from x1 to xn plus 1? We can apply the result here. We can think of this as one real number, the sum from x1 to xn, and xn plus 1 as another real number. The fractional part of this summation is the fractional part of the fractional part of this number. This will be the fractional part of the sum from x1 to xn plus xn plus 1. Under the assumption that this is uniform and this is uniform, then we have a proof that the fractional part of the sum of two ILD uniform random variables is also uniform. If this hypothesis is true for n, then it is true for n plus 1. Therefore, by induction, the distribution of the fractional part for every n that is a positive integer is uniform on the interval from 0 to 1. Consequently, the first moment of the fractional part is the expectation of a uniform random variable from 0 to 1. This is 1 half. Let's now turn our focus to the CDF of the sum. We can do the small cases. We can make a guess for what is the general CDF for n random variables then we can establish our result using induction. The claim is that the CDF of the sum is this summation here, k from zero to the floor of small x outside the sum. We have the factor one over n factorial. Inside the sum, we have minus one to the power k, and it choose k, x minus k to the power n. This is the form of the CDF when small x is between zero and small n. If small x exceeds a small n, then of course, the CDF is equal to 1 because we know that this summation here in value is between 0 and small n. If a small n is equal to 1, then x is between 0 and 1. K can only take the value 0. And if we check this summation with only one term corresponding to k equal to 0, we get x, which is the known CDF of a uniform random variable. We will assume that this result is valid when we have n of those random variables and we will try to show that it is valid when we investigate the CDF of n plus one random variables. For n plus one random variables, we can condition on the value of the random variable x n plus one, the probability that the sum from x one to x n plus one being less than or equal to small x is the probability that x one all the way to x n plus alpha is less than or equal to x times the BDF of the random variable x n plus one evaluated at alpha. Well, the BDF of x n plus one is just equal to one on the interval from zero to one and then we integrate with respect to alpha. This is the CDF if we have n plus one random variables. We want to show that this integral here is exactly given by this expression when we replace small n by small n plus one. Suppose that x is between j and j plus one. If j is zero, then x is between zero and one. If j is one, x is between one and two. If j is two, x is between two and three and so forth. x is between j and j plus one. Alpha is between 0 and 1. Minus alpha is between minus 1 and 0. If we add x and minus alpha, x minus alpha is between j minus 1 and j plus 1. The floor of x minus alpha, which is an integer, is either j minus 1 or the next integer, which is j. There are two possible values for the floor of x minus alpha. Why are we interested in the floor of this quantity? We have here the probability that x1 all the way to xn plus alpha is less than or equal to small x. This probability is exactly equal to the probability that the sum x1 all the way to xn is less than or equal to small x minus alpha. We have an induction hypothesis. In this expression, we have the floor of x. We are interested in the CDF evaluated at x minus alpha. So this floor of x will be replaced by the floor of x minus alpha. That's the reason that here we examined bounds on x minus alpha. x minus alpha is between the integer g minus 1 and is strictly less than the integer g plus 1, telling us that the possible values of the floor of x minus alpha are g minus 1 or j. For the floor to be equal to j minus 1, x minus alpha must be less than j. Move alpha to this side and j to this side, so we have alpha must be greater than x minus j. Based on this, we split our integral from 0 to 1 into two integrals. In one of them, alpha is from x minus j to 1. In this case, this probability using this sum here will have the floor of x minus alpha equal to 
j minus one. In other words, because we have x minus alpha here, we go to the induction hypothesis that this summation is the CDF. If we have n of those iid uniform random variables, we go here, replace x by x minus alpha. This x is replaced by x minus alpha, and also this x here. Now the floor of x minus alpha is g minus one when alpha is greater than x minus g. In the other integral, we have also x minus alpha here, but now the floor of x minus alpha is equal to j. We have an expression for the CDF of the sum of n plus one iid uniform random variables. It has these two integrals. For each integral, swab integration and summation, both sums are finite and integrals are linear. So we can just integrate this term here and this term there. For this one, the integration is from x minus g to one. Here it is from zero to x minus g. And this is what we get. We get here and there the differences between two terms. Split each summation so that we end up with four sums. This summation here comes using this term. And there is a similarly looking term. So let's write it here. In this summation, we have k from zero to g minus one. In this summation, we have k from zero to j. However, if we put k equal to j, this bracket is equal to zero. Effectively, this summation is from zero to j minus one. These two sums are exactly the same. One with a plus sign and the other with a minus sign. These two sums cancel. We are left with the two sums involving this term and that term. In this summation, replace k by k minus one. Here we have k equal to zero, so k minus one equal to zero, k is equal to one. This summation here, after doing this substitution, k starts from one and we have j terms. k is from one to j. If we look at the summand, this becomes minus one to the power k minus one and choose k minus one, x minus one, minus between brackets k minus one, all to the power small n plus one. We have a minus sign here, together with minus one to the power k minus one, that's plus minus one to the power k. And here we have x minus k to the power n plus one. Regarding this sum, let's isolate the term when k is equal to zero. This will be minus one to the power zero, that's one, n to zero, that's one, x minus zero to the power n plus one, that's x to the power n plus one, divided by n plus one factorial. Then copy and paste here, the summation now is from one to j. Note that these two sums can be combined. The index here and there is from one to j. There is minus one to the k and x minus k to the n plus one here and there. We can take these as common factors and the different terms that are summed are n choose k and n choose k minus one. From the properties of the binomial coefficients, n choose k plus n choose k minus one is n plus one choose k, which can be verified by writing both coefficients using factorials. And in this summation, if there is a term that is k equal to zero, n plus one choose zero is one, minus one to the zero is one, and we get x to the n plus one divided by n plus one factorial, which is exactly this term here. Thus, this term can be reunited with this summation, and the sum starts from zero. The last point is that we are doing this investigation for x between j and j plus one. The floor of x itself is equal to j. I can write down this j as the floor of x. Look at our expression. For the case of n random variables, the assumption was that this expression is valid. One over n factorial summation from zero to the floor of x minus one to the power k n choose k x minus k to the power n. We have shown that if this is taken to be true, then the CDF of the sum of n plus one of those ILD uniform random variables will be the same expression with n replaced by n plus one. And this expression is true for small n equal to one by induction. This is indeed the true CDF of the sum of n iid uniform random variables defined on the interval from zero to one. It's true for every positive integer n. Once we have the CDF, we can just differentiate with respect to small x to obtain the PDF of the sum, which has this form here, whenever small x is between zero and n. Now let's investigate the expectation of the floor of the sum. Let's go to the easy way first. The easy way is to say that the floor is the sum itself minus its fractional part. Expectation is linear. Every one of those guys has a mean value of one half. The expectation of those n terms is n over two. The fractional part, as shown at the beginning of the video, is uniform. 
on the interval from 0 to 1. The first moment is 1 half. So the expectation of this fractional part is 1 half, and the expectation of the floor is n over 2 minus 1 over 2. Note that this expectation in an integral form is the n-dimensional integral, where every variable is from 0 to 1, dx1, dx2, all the way to dxn, and then here we have the floor of small x1 plus small x2 all the way to small xn. This n-dimensional integral is equal to n minus 1 divided by 2. The last thing that we can do is to evaluate this expectation using the CDF of the sum. We should get a result that is also equal to small n minus 1 divided by 2. Let's think about this expectation in another way. This floor is equal to 0 if the sum is between 0 and 1. So this expectation will have a term 0 times the CDF evaluated at 1 minus the CDF evaluated at 0. This floor is 1 with the probability that the sum is between 1 and 2. Given the CDF, this is f sub n of 2 minus f sub n of 1. That's the probability that the sum is less than or equal to 2. That's the probability that the sum is less than or equal to 1. And the difference will give us the probability that this sum is between 1 and 2. And consequently, the floor is equal to 1. The floor can be equal to 2 if the sum is between 2 and 3. The probability that this summation is between 2 and 3 in terms of the CDF is the CDF of the sum evaluated at 3 minus the CDF evaluated at 2, and so forth. We can combine all those terms as a summation j from 1 to n minus 1, j times the probability that the sum is between j and j plus 1. That's fn of j plus 1 minus fn of j. Okay. Split this into two sums. In the first sum, replace j by j minus 1. So here we have j minus 1 is equal to 1. The sum now will start from 2. The sum has n minus 1 terms. So this summation goes from 2 to n. This j becomes j minus 1, and this j plus 1 becomes j. We can write this down as summation from 1 to n, because if j is equal to 1, this will be equal to 0, minus this other sum, which is from 1 to n minus 1. We can isolate the term here, corresponding to j equal to small n. This will give us small n minus 1, and then the CDF evaluated at n. Note that this is equal to 1. The probability that the sum is less than or equal to n is equal to 1. Then we can combine the sums. From here, we have g minus 1 minus g. That's minus 1, and then the CDF. This is the formula that we have given the CDF on the previous page. We have this double sum here, and we have minus 1 to the k. We have n choose k, g minus k to the power n. It must be the case that this quantity here is exactly equal to the result that we have obtained using the distribution and the first moment of the fractional part of the sum of n random values. This must be equal to n minus 1 divided by 2. We can move the double sum to this side and move n minus 1 over 2 to the left-hand side. n minus 1 minus n minus 1 over 2, that's n minus 1 over 2. We can multiply both sides by the factorial of n. And then on the right-hand side, we have the summation g from 1 to n minus 1, and then summation on k from 0 to g or to g minus 1. Note that here, if k is equal to j, this is equal to 0. Let's put it here, j minus 1, minus 1 to the k, n choose k, j minus k to the power n. It must be that this double sum is equal to n minus 1 over 2 times the factorial of n.